Hi, I'm Andrea, and I'm going to show you how I set up my eDrum kit for use with Superior Drummer 2 and Logic Pro X. Um, my equipment is um, Mac Mini, 16 gigs of RAM, Mac OS Sierra. I have a Focusrite Sapphire 18 in, 8 out USB interface, cheap little Casio keyboard, and a very cheap little uh, a less SD4 drum brain that I bought used for about 50 bucks and I've got a variety of used brand and sometimes no brand uh, brand name drum pads uh, connected. So basically all told for my drum kit I've probably paid about 100 bucks something like that. But it suits my purposes just fine. Software I have Logic Pro X and Superior Drummer although your Superior, Superior Drummer is my drum plug-in but um, this, uh, the same the steps I'm going to show you work with BFD and uh, um, and addictive drums too. Um, and the reason I'm showing you what I did is because for me using the drum samples from Superior Drummer and Easy Drummer just wasn't good enough. I'm um, I have very particular needs and I actually need my drum pieces the the parts of my kit I need them to show up on separate tracks. Um, in Logic Pro so I can uh, uh, program them correctly. I, I gotta have better control over it. I can't have all my drum pieces showing up on one track. So anyway, this is how I did it and I'm showing you because I found this uh, very difficult to learn. Um, the Alesis D4 is not supported anymore so you can't really find very much on how to connect an, an Alesis D4 to the drum software. Uh, there wasn't very much on um, online on Logic Pro X about how to do this. And Superior Drummer, I couldn't even find any directions on this the Tune Track website about how to do this. Um, but anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to open Logic Pro X. You're going to add a software track, a software instrument track for whatever drum software you have. In this case, I have Superior Drummer 2. If the plugin opens automatically at this point, you can close it. So I got Superior Drummer. You want to make sure and click on your instrument plugin and make sure you select multi output. And you're going to click on create. Okay, plugin opens automatically. You want to open the mixer. Okay. You're going to check the output. There's there's one channel for each drum piece on your in your kit. You want to check the output. Okay. You want to make sure the output is different for each channel or group of channels. I say group of channels because the kicks, there's the, there's three channels devoted to the kick, and those their output on those channels is always output one and two. And that's fine. So you're gonna see the first the output on the first three channels is one and two, and that's fine. If you see that all of them are output 1 and 2, you want to change that because you don't want, I, I don't want all my drum signals to show up on the same channel or to be output to the same channel. So if they all say 1 and 2, you're going to click on the first output on the first channel and change that to multi-channel. Okay, mine's already multi-channel, I don't need to change it. But that's what you do if the output on every channel says 1 and 2, you're going to select multi-channel. When you do that, it's going to change your, your pieces and change the output on each channel strip to a different output. So your snare drum is going to be out to 3 and 4, the top, the bottom to 5 and 6, the hi-hats to 7 and 8, and so forth and so on. Each channel strip is going to say something slightly different. Okay, now you strike your drum pads. Okay. You want to make sure that you have output from each one. You're going to make note of which channel or channels the signal from that piece goes into. So for example, when I hit the kick, oh, not the kick. 
when I hit the kick, I want to make sure that the first three channel strips are getting a signal. And they are. That's your kick in, kick out, kick sub. And they're all getting uh, signals just like they should. Hi-hat. You want to make sure your hi-hat channel is getting a signal. And it is. And that's my hi-hat pedal. And that's getting a signal. And it's on the correct channel. So you want to basically just, all you got to do is just hit each piece on your kit. And make sure that, make note of which channel is getting the output from it. And that's good. So once you have everything set up um, in your mixer the way you want it, and it sounds right, you're going to save it. In this case, I already have a preset. I could save this, but I don't want to save it. I'm going to open up the preset that I just did, which is my uh, small kit preset. Okay? But you want to make sure, whenever you make any changes in the mixer view, you want to make sure and save this preset so you don't lose anything you did. So, with each piece, make sure that you have output going to uh, the correct channel. I always like to look down here at the bottom where uh, the microphone setting is. Uh, that's basically, it's the name of the microphone, it's also the name of your channel strip. Make sure that you, that uh, those are named correctly. And they are. Okay. So, you're going to close out of your plug-in. In Logic Pro X, you're going to open the mixer view. Okay. This is the new software instrument channel, uh, the, the software instrument that you just set up. Probably about the only thing you're going to see. Okay. If you have maybe six pieces in your kit, you're going to want to add six, maybe six or seven channel strips. So you're going to click on this plus bottom down here, plus key down here, and add maybe seven. That should be enough. Add about seven uh, channel strips. They are going to be aux channels, but that's fine. You're going to rename that in just a minute. Okay. Notice how in the input, the only thing that matters here is you want to make sure the inputs are correct. The input should not, all of these strips should not say 1 and 2. And that's because we have Superior Drummer set up as a multi-channel output. And so therefore the input should also be multi-channel. The input in Logic Pro is the output from Superior Drummer. So this is all correct. Even though this channel doesn't say 1 and 2, the first channel strip is not going to say 1 and 2. The input is 1 and 2. Okay, that's your 3 and 4 from output from Superior Drummer. 5 and 6, 7 and 8, 9 and 10, 11 and 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. So that is correct. All right, so then... Um, You've created as many aux channels as you have pieces in your drum kit. That's what you want. And you check the input and make sure that the input is corresponds to the correct output from Superior Drummer. And it does, by automatically. Alright, you're going to strike each drum piece. Notice how the first channel, which we already knew, the, in, the uh, input is the 1 and 2 output from Superior Drummer. We already know that's the kick drum. And then we're getting the kick drum. Alright. That's my hi-hat. That The output from Superior Drummer for the hi-hat was 7 and 8. And then this is correct in Logic Pro. Same thing for the hi-hat pedal. I'm going to strike each piece. And make sure that you have output from that piece. And your output is going into one of the aux channels. 
and only one. And that's the way I want it. Okay, so then, now you know, I know that this channel strip right here is my kick drum. I'm going to rename it. Not that one. Yeah, this one. This one is kick drum. So I'm going to rename it kick. Okay, the second channel strip. And you'll know by striking each drum piece, you know what it is. Yeah, that's my snare. Snare top. And I also have another drum trigger set up as a side stick. Well, that's a snare. So that's why it's so I'm gonna that's why it's coming out on the signal is coming out on this channel strip. It's a snare instrument, but the tool is a side stick. It, whatever. So anyway, I'm going to rename this snare top and side stick. Snare bottom and side and side stick. Snare bottom and side stick. This one is probably the tom. Nope. This one is the hi hat hi-hat and the hi-hat pedal. They're both going to output in that channel. Alright. Floor tom. Ride symbol. Don't think that channel strip. Okay, so aux seven is the uh, rack tom, and I only have one tom. It's a left tom setup, so we'll call it left tom. And aux six might not be assigned to anything. So if it's not. it's not. So aux 6, as it turns out, isn't assigned to anything. So we can just delete that. And yes, it's going to say the selected auxiliary channel receives signal from an active bus routing. It's because it's getting a signal from Superior Drummer. We don't actually have a drum piece assigned to that channel, so we can delete it. Alright. Alright, so those are my little pieces. Again, I'm just going to go around the drum kit and make sure that I've got signal coming out into the desired channel, and I do. So you've got everything working now, but up in the track view, it's still, you see, up in the track view, there's still just one track. And actually, So what we're going to do is we want to create tracks for each drum piece. So what we're going to do is highlight each one of these channel strips. Left click and click on right click or click on create track. And there we go. So now in the track view up at the top, I'm hitting the hi-hat pedal. Signal is showing up on the hi-hat pedal. Hi-hat pedal. Floor to our left tom. Snare. Snare top and bottom. Side stick. Ride. Floor tom. Kick drum. Everything is getting, the channels are getting the signals just exactly the way I want them. Alright, I can close out of the mixer view. Everything is actually, no, let me show you a little bit of cleanup. This is what I do. 
Uh, Logic Pro automatically assigns uh, your drum pieces to a green. It colors them green. I too many things are colored green in Logic Pro, and it makes it look. It, it's a little confusing for me. So what I like to do is color all my drum pieces something different. And my computer's acting up right now. But anyway, so I'm not going to do it. But um, I like to change these colors to uh, to red and group them all together. So, all right. So there we go. You're going to highlight your channel strips. You can group these. So I want to. Create a new group and call it drums. Now we'll call it drums. Okay. So that way, if you later on, if you want to um, set up another bus channel for your effects and stuff like that, um, you can uh, route the entire group, your entire drum group to that, if that's what you want, or each individual individual channel. It doesn't matter. All right. And we're going to change the colors, too. I don't like green on that because everything is green in Logic Pro. So I'm going to change that to red. Channel strip color, we'll, put it, we'll make it red. Okay. So that way you'll know when you're looking at, at a mixer with a million tracks in it, all these red tracks, these are all your drum tracks. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much what I did. And then you can close out of your mixer view, um, clean your screen up a little bit. If you want to, you can assign icons uh, just to clean it up even more. So you can put your snare. Make it a snare there, snare bottom, and so forth and so on. And the cool thing about this is, all right, so for your hi-hat, all right, I'm not going to go through and change that, but you get the idea. You can do that. So now the cool thing is, if you play drums, you know, you can actually go ahead and play your drum pattern, and each each drum piece will show up on its own channel for its own processing and so forth and it's a lot easier to make corrections that way but the really cool thing is you can go into your plugin your superior drummer or whatever you have go into your, your plugin and have it play a sample so I'm going to go to grooves and pick some kind of a sample And you notice how instead of playing it all, all the signal going to one track, now each drum piece is going to its own track. So you can add more snare. Well, I've got them grouped together, but anyway. So but you kind of get the idea. So it makes it a lot easier to uh, make corrections and... Uh, Customize things the way you want them if you've got all your drum pieces going to a separate track. And that's it. So anyway, I hope you find it helpful. And uh, I'm going to try and post these videos. The more I learn about it, um, I will try to, uh, to record what I've learned. And um, last thing you want to do is save your project. Uh, you can either save it as a project or save it as a template. I already have a drum template so I'm not going to save this but if I was creating one for the first time I would probably want to save this as a drum template and um, that way um, makes it easier the next time you want to open up a new project. So anyway, um, thank you very much and hope you learned something.